It's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 25. I can do one hand. That's plenty. You can do it like in Roman numerals on one hand? <laughs> no, I haven't figured that out yet. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, we're going to continue with our Audio Masters Roundtable. We have got Jordan Reynolds and Cliff Zellman and Uncle Roy Yokelson uh, joining us. And we've got all sorts of questions you guys have been sending in, which ought to make for a very interesting hour here on Tech Talk. So stay tuned. And if you got any questions and you're watching this live, send them in on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now from the outer reaches they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the vo universe they bring it to you now george widom the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. All right, time for Tech Talk Across the Universe <laughs> with Cliff Zellman in Dallas. Hi, Cliff. Oh, let's turn on their mics. Yeah, that might help. <laughs> I always miss that. Speaking Audio today. Sorry, you guys. Hi, Cliff. Hi. Hi. Okay. Uncle Roy joining us from Bloomington, New Jersey. Bloomington. Bloomfield. Bloomfield. Bloom, bloom, Bloomfield. Blue, boom. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. And Jordan Reynolds, who's joining us from right here in our secret clubhouse in Sherman Oaks. No secret. Yeah. I didn't know the password. I had to do some. Didn't even Short. ring the bell. You just walked in yeah, the gate. Yeah, I know. Usually it's nice and locked. Yeah. I made it. Yes. Anyway, we're going to talk tech, and we got a lot of questions from people. And again, if you have a question for us, throw it in our chat room on our webpage, if you happen to be watching it there. Or if you're on Facebook, throw it in there. Because if we don't know the answer, there is no answer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what do we got there, Jorge? So, Starting my with favorite question of all time in voiceover, which is, from Matt Simmons. All right. What's the best all-around mic? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can we, like, reach through the internet and grab him by the throat and <laughs> model him? It's round. It's oh. round. Uh, <laughs> is that is that a, a, a pop screen for a BK-1? What is no, that? A, a, a BK-5. 420. Oh, but. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. I didn't know that existed. That's pretty neat. I love the BK5, though. Yeah. Do you have a 421? I have two ivory old school ones. Yeah. Yeah. I've got the MDs. Yeah. I need the that black one. You could go ahead and shoot it on over. All right. You guys just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so <No. laughs> uh, I had to give at least some answer, Don't. right? So yes. I think for under $100. The um, MXL 990 is pretty damn good. I love I've it. Heard a lot of really good stuff out of that cheap mic. Yeah. Really good. Uh, what? Let's say, Jordan, you do the the the, uh, the hundred to three hundred dollar price range. Pick um, a mic. AT 2020 or okay. ATR 8 ATR no AT 875R by right. Audio Technica. Yeah. Both yeah. mics by Audio. Those are great mics. mics. Yeah, can I, I throw the, one in there? In that price the, range, sure. 
Yeah, Road NT1. Yeah, NT1. The black not, one. Not the, the 1A. One. Not the 1A. Not the 1A. <laughs> right. No, it's too thin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And from three to five hundred dollar range. Three to five hundred dollars. Um, CAD one thousand. The well, the the uh, I was going to say the E one hundred S. I like. Yeah, the yeah. CAD E one hundred S. You know, that's you know, I've got that. Don't use it that much. Uh, you know, we've got the Bluebird here, which oh, sounds three hundred ish range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's within that range, and yeah. of course the VO one A, which is right, right on in that, that three hundred dollar price range. You know, they're all good mics. My belief is the best mic to have is the one you have, because it's, it's kind of like a camera. Yeah, or as my mom used to say, "Better to the devil you know than the devil you don't." <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Cliff, a uh, a mic from five hundred to eight hundred dollars. Mm. Well, if you get the Joe Cipriano uh, tennis special. <laughs> That's true. You know, you can see him on eBay for 500 I, Yeah. Right. You know what, guys? Listen, you know, Sweetwater gives you 48 months, no interest, automatic payments. Good for you, 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 you want a 416 you can pay $19 a month. It's one less sushi dinner. If you want Don't let it. price, you know. Uh, but, of course, if you want to use, you know, what works best for you. Uh, in that price range... Gosh, I don't know. I'd go, the, I'd go for the Joe. Yeah, a little bright. I'd go for the. I'd go for the Joe Cipriano special. I'd go with. The, I'd try to find a eight hundred dollar four sixteen. And did we get Uncle Roy's recommendation in there? I yeah, Neumann one hundred two. Clip didn't like one hundred two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's there you go. Cool. There's, there's or like... Uncle Roy's four fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> if you can book some time in Uncle Roy's studio, uses four fourteen. Is that an EB, Uncle Roy? Yes. Oh, oh baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. vintage. Mm. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Right. Mm. Next there you question. go, man. It's the best answer ever on that question. Everybody come to New Jersey. Well, you're coming <laughs> anyway, but that's besides the point. <laughs> okay. JDK, JDK says, most voiceover YouTube videos are like diagnosing your own medical problem on WebMD. <laughs> <laughs> Just a statement, but yeah, a good one. Right. An apt one. That's a great question. <laughs> uh, Paul says, Paul Stefano, our old pal. Um, in 2020, are there any USB mics good enough as a main studio mic? I have sure. an opinion because I, I just uh, tested one. Yeah. You, yeah. you test a lot. of USB Um, stuff. I tested the Sennheiser MK4 digital. Mm-hmm. And while I don't like that, it has no headphone jack. I hate that. I hate that it doesn't have a proper gain control for when plugged into a Mac, but it does on an iOS device. <laughs> Weird crap like that it sounds ama- it does sound really good like the mm. it's a really hi-fi sounding mic really cool really nice but features wise it's a it's a pain it's just not fun to use so i th- it takes a blow it's also 400 bucks oh. it ain't cheap so yeah, ain't that's cheap. my opinion on usb but yeah there are good sounding ones just would you choose to use them especially when a good one's 400 dollars and you can get a signal chain now for 250 Right. That sounds damn good. It yeah. just seems like you're crippling yourself for no good reason. So that's my. But with that, there's so also that. there's also a barrier to entry with um, learning. Like if you're coming, if you're just starting, right? If you're really new, and that's like a lot more stuff, more knobs, more things to worry about yeah. versus just like my in. USB mic. Just to, right. if you're just getting started, right? Really, really fresh off the off the turnip truck. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a 2020 USB. The plus is nice. It has the headphone jack. Apogee your audio. Plus. I, I was, was going to say yeah, that's my favorite. Say, the old mic. Apogee really mic, good. the original, so was was a great mic. Yeah, the original is good. They're yeah. all good. I mean, yeah. and you can use it as a main studio mic and carry it around with you because yeah. if you go on the road, even though I say when you go on the road, go on the road for whatever it is you go on the road for, not to be doing voiceover, unless you have handcuffs on, you say you've got to be you know available twenty four hours a day. Uh, the Apogee mic or the or the uh, you know the the improved models of that. You know the old original was great. Not very uh, forgiving on plosives. No, no. If, you, if you have if, good so if you if you yeah. can get good, good audio out of that mic, good technique, then you're it's a great mic. It's, yeah, you know yeah. it's it's on par with some some more expensive microphones. They yeah. did a great job at Epigee, but Epigee is great because their digital end is really good. They make great yeah. preamps and converters, uh, yeah. and that's why great that's converters. Why they, yeah, yeah, they're 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 really good. So how about you guys? Road NT, Cliff. Uh, Road NT and NT USB from Road. I have no yeah. experience with USB microphones. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a bad way. I, no, I, I don't mean that in a, in a condescending way. I, just, I, I don't own any, and I've never used one. Yeah, you know, you know, as a Yeti. 
You when, know, you, when you I use don't... a 416 as a talkback mic, I get it. Clint. I, I, I get put it. it in my back pocket, you know, you cop on the plane. <laughs> it's great. And I, I don't know uh, anything about USB microphones. Cliffy. I mean, uh, Uncle, Uncle Roy. Roy. Yeah, I I, I uh, go with the original uh, Apogee. I, I think that was a great. Yeah. It's probably the only mic that does sound good inside a Chaotica eyeball. It, it actually, <laughs> or fits. I was going to say that. It fits <laughs> and sounds yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I loved your right. thing with stuffing the socks in there, though. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not yeah. supposed to talk about it. Oh, I no, guess no, some no, legal no, action no. around that? or uh... No, no. And, and Harlan wrote me a really nice letter, and he sent me a... A recording sign for being a man for being a mensch <laughs> so why not i love it um next question greg get greg's voice get fred's voice sorry <laughs> uh, does adobe audition oh this is a goofy question does D adobe audition go all the way to 11 when you turn it to the right <laughs> that's the question Nicely. Unfortunately, it goes to 12 if you know how to misuse yeah. it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a couple from Peter Ponce. Hey, Peter. Isn't part of the obsession with tools like the eyeball driven by marketing? Yes. It's the only tool you'll ever need to sound fantastic. Absolutely. Isn't that every product, though? <laughs> sure. You know, well, headphones, yeah. microphones. I mean, yeah, every, all yeah. advertising has to have a little hyperbole yeah. with it. But, yeah. you know, but like, like Cliff said, it's a tool. Yeah. It's a tool. Sure. And you go to the trade shows and you see the demo, and then you try it. It's up to yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. It the, the the chaotic eyeball undeniably changes the sound of the mic. Like it I sounds... think just because of the compression design, I think that it absolutely does. Yeah. And I think that a, a, a microphone like a twenty twenty sounds great in an eyeball. It takes away all the harsh, yeah. awful nastiness that a twenty twenty offers, <laughs> and then you and then you throw it. A, uh, a microphone, a high quality microphone in an eyeball, and it ain't happening. So yeah, it, it makes a cheap mic sound good. It makes a good mic sound like crap. So it's right, you go. Kind of but right. it's a tool. You know, it's a yes. tool. We and have I an, have one. We have an audience question in the audience. Yes. Let's check that mic. Jeff Holman. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, 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 Jeff. Hey. So mouth noise is the bane of my existence. One of the problems I have is this breathing thing where it's like, and uh, I believe what Cliff was saying something about uh, a sword swallowing technique or something. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us more. The sword swallowing technique. I call it that because it's in mixed company. <laughs> um, but if you would take a flashlight and you hold it you know, over the head of a sword swallow, there would pretty much be a straight line right down to his puppet. So inhaling as much air as you can, feel your lungs, get them comfortable. Keep your mouth and your throat open before you start the sentence. So instead of starting a sentence like, how many times have you, how many times have you, it's going to be much cleaner. There's no push. There's no plosive because you're not starting from a closed esophagus, a closed mouth. Um, that'll help your clicks, uh, you know, in the beginning of your sentences. A lot of people start... How many times? Oh, I, do, I do that. And, I hate when I do well, that, and I do it. We hate to hear that because a lot of times we're listening on big monitors, and those, it's like it's negative reinforcement. And you say, I don't like this read. Why? I don't know. Well, because you're hearing, and it's, it's, on a and it's annoying. Right. Um, obviously, the best thing to do is try to tame it on an, on you know physical level. Um, otherwise, you know, notch those guys blow up your waveform, find it. Very easy to find. Adobe Audition, again, is very easy to find. Um, I'm not sure. But the sword swallow technique, another neat thing about that is, hang on. He has a sword, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Shing! Good. Theater of the mind. From the beginning of fall to the end of spring is a long time, and since there's really nothing anyone can do about it, you might as well make the best of it by driving the fully redesigned Kia Soul. And when summer finally arrives, you'll be ready. On one breath. <sighs> well, yeah, four, that's, four that's lines, one thing. You guys, at, that's, yeah. Now, pull it in, hold it for two seconds. Zero is a number, right? Zero, one, two, start reading. Don't push the air out. Let the air out come naturally. You triple the amount of lines you can read. You won't run out of breath. You don't have to stop. And in the you won't have that initial 
a <gasps> syllable that's <gasps> really loud. loud. Right. Yeah. Yep. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Preston. And it's Preston you know, look, yeah. we're in our booths by ourselves. Nobody nobody can see us when we're recording and auditioning and stuff. Maybe yeah, you can edit that out. Yeah, edit all that stuff. Goofy as you want. Hold it in. Hold it for two seconds. And when you start to speak, don't push it out. If you inhale, hi there, how are you? I'm already done. I got four lines. I'm out of air. But if you let that air just go out, just by keeping your throat, your lungs open as it comes out, it's going to be beautiful. And you double the amount of lines you can read. So That's there right. you go. And I can I add something to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, That's why you're here. Well, what I hear, it's why I, I'm not a vocal anatomy expert. I'm studying it. <laughs> like I'm in the earth. Like you think at this point in my career, I should know these things, but so I don't know exactly like what palette is doing what. But what I heard it, when you were just demonstrating it, I heard like it was like a combination of glo glottal stops. But then, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you know, could be, could be. yeah. And so just be that's all right here. That's your vocal cords doing this. So, which which is just air being compressed. Like, <laughs> so I don't that Cliss technique could help with the beginning if it's happening at the beginning. But if there's it, stuff, if there's like a deeper sounding click happening at the ends of your phrases, is it usually at the end? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's the beginning. It's the end. It's okay. In it's, the middle. it's in the middle. Okay. That's a nasal. Everywhere. Yeah. So then there's nasal clicks, which the declicker you can like I was saying you could lower it to the low frequency setting. There's only two mm -hmm. sliders. There's strength and then low and high frequency. If you slide it down to the low. I'll try that if that still doesn't work on my I have really bad allergies a lot of the, a lot of days and what happens is is if you get a lot of congestion up in here it will at the ends of your phrases you'll you'll say something and then like you know if you like do a fake uh I'm plugging I'm doing my plugging my nose sound uh -huh. and if I let go of that that feeling there's I don't know what part it is someone could do in the chat but what I let go and now I'm back in my normal voice when I let go of that sound it creates a click uh-huh not so let me try to make this clear. When I'm on a clicky, a very sinus clicky day, I'll finish my, I'll be like, you know, only 199. And then like, I don't breathe. I don't exhale. I don't inhale. I keep my mouth open and I don't That's it. like, I make sure my mouth anatomy stops and I go to the side of the mic and then I, I and then I just relax my palate, whatever it is. And then I hear the click release, but I wait instead of just like 199 and then just being relaxed. I'm like 199. That's great. That's and then, great. and I literally hear the click. And then it's in between the lines. So the engineer will already be cutting that out if it's a session. Yeah. Or if you're editing your own audiobooks, it's silence. You're, del you're deleting breaths, right? Yes. So it'll be with a breath. Right. And so it, and, yeah. And if you're doing a, like a 30 second read or something like that, it doesn't take that much time to go through there in an audition exactly. and just do an auto heal. It's like, oh, there's that, that, that boom. Exactly. It's out of there. But he, it, he's like talking about audiobooks. I'm talking yeah. like, audiobooks. Oh, if you, but audiobooks are a whole yeah. different. That's a, so just play with that, yeah. like closing your, like society like that. And then you'll feel this part. I don't know. I think it's the soft palate, like touching and releasing uh -huh. that can literally Andrew, control a sinus lot. click from actually triggering it's awesome. weird <laughs> i don't know yeah, wish i could describe it better but that's the best i can describe right, thank it you. well we've had some episodes with some a, a couple different ents and yeah. and voice therapy people even a even a laryngeal massage person on our <laughs> show wow so definitely check back on vobs for people that there's been we've covered a lot of stuff i don't even remember a third of what they said but oh, and dan's good, ent Dan from oh, back Joe, in Joe, Buffalo. I got I got to get a hold that of Joel. He may best. be retired by now, but that was my favorite VO body shop, uh, 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 East West. Yeah, Ewabs. Yeah, Ewabs. <laughs> Ewabs. Right. That was great. Yeah, my <laughs> my, my, my ENT Joel Bernstein back in Buffalo was a has an ego to the size of Texas, but he's a great guy. <laughs> But uh, also a world-renowned ENT, or I'm sorry, a rhino Early otolaryngology. ENT. Rhino otolaryngology. And who was he up against? Uh, John Taylor. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. That was, and we miss John, too. That was oil and water. It was the <laughs> so fantastic. Oh, yeah. We started talking about boogers. And oh, it was so gross. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a life. wild night. It was uh, so good. Um, next question, I think, from uh, our good- Peter Ponce is uh, what I got. Go for it. Um, which is better, the Audient ID4 or the Yamaha AG03? Or are they, or just, are they just different? different. Man, that's a I'm gonna jump in real quick. I have the AG06, I really dig it. It's semi pro, okay? I really dig it. I use it every day. There's nothing wrong with it. It's semi pro. You have to back that up, man. What does that mean? What does that um, mean? Um, uh, I, I would, if, if I had one sitting next to the other for recording, I would use the Audient. Yeah, but why? It's, I think it sounds better. Well, there you go. 
Uh, yeah, but it's simple. But as far as what you can do, and with the with the AGO three and the AGO six, um, if you're a guitar player, it's got amp emulators in there. It's got an on screen uh, compressor and EQ. If you want to uh, get into that stuff, it's got foldbacks, um, and it's 150 bucks. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, you know, I mean, if you're shooting, you know, big time stuff out there, you probably don't want to use it as your main interface. I would I would go for the audio. Yeah, I've, I'm I'm actually I'm actually testing a, a, an ID14 right now, and I like it. it. You know, it sounds great. It's got a lot of cool features. I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. You know, because it has the, the uh, console thing. It has the console thing, and mm. I'm like, oh, okay. But I have to write some articles on it. And so far, I mean, it's what I'm using. You know, and I've got I've got two I2s, and I've got the AGO3, and I've, you know, they keep piling up, and it's like, well, I yeah. could use this one. I could use that one. I, I like the audience stuff, you know, they're, uh, yeah, they're a little, they're a little different. Yeah. Audience stuff going to just be more simple to manage and hook up. The Yamahas are very busy. Um, they are busy. Features wise. Yeah. Like yeah. It, there's just a lot of stuff a voice talent won't use, but right, if you right. want to be able to expand, like plug in maybe something else externally or have a second mic, cause you do music like Cliff was saying. Or produce uh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Or, or honestly, I use mine for karaoke. Mara and I were singing Beatles. Yeah, songs a good night. karaoke too. And it, I soaked up the SM58, yes. put it in. It's got reverb and compressor yeah. on it. And then I, yeah. I route that into the into this home theater system. <laughs> home theater. USB. I don't have a theater. I have a family room. You don't, need, TV you don't need external power. It, it goes off your USB. Yeah, and it's USB right. powered. So yeah. yep. And it's it's great for the money. Yeah. And it's it's beautiful. I feel like the audience woods does sound a little bit more I cleaner. Totally and agree. A little bit lower yep. noise. Yeah, lower yep. noise. Lower noise yeah. So yeah, I agree. Paul Stefano. I love the Yamaha. Yep. Agreed. Uh says Studio Bricks. Is it the gold standard or it seems to be the gold standard anyway? Um, are there any newcomers we should know about in the booth scene? You guys have any opinions? I mean, I've Studio Bricks has done a hell of a job making a a p p desirable Mercedes Benz level booth. They they really understand what it means to be building a soundproof booth for voice actors. I mean, you know, the the uh, Guillermo was a musician, which is why he designed this thing. Because vocal booths are designed to primarily keep noise from coming out, so you're not bothering people on the outside. <laughs> Right, uh, and that was the design. But they also understood and really marketed and 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 really asked how how someone uses it as a voice actor, and they really solved a lot of those problems. You know, I'm going to be really you know frank about this, but there are other companies out there. I've some of them I've had closer relationships than others, but you know, of on a whole, the one who's listened the most about what I think should be improved or what is you know what could be made better or just listen to me at all frankly is is as is, is the studio bricks guys um you know i've i've met guillermo at shows we i've talked to him many times about improve this improve that has he done everything no but it's his company it's not mine for how but, small of a company they are <laughs> the amount of stuff that they've changed and improved and how much they yeah. li how much time they give to listen yeah. is astounding compared yeah. to you know, it I won't is. name any companies, but there's a lot bigger booth companies there that are. we all know. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, yeah, I, I have a studio bricks at home. That's what I, you know, not, not only do, do they the look one the, best, or the one plus, uh, we have, one? we have a pro, it's a triple pro, one. which is, is that the size of the one plus what's, what's uh, the dimensions? Oh, dimensions. It's custom. It's like five and a half by five and a half. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Feet. Um, you went with a square booth. Yeah. Don't get, yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> are you using just the acoustics the, did you get the pack oh you you tuned it well yeah it's a work in progress work in i just progress. got a different desk which only has like one less shelf than the desk i replaced it with and it's changed differently. <laughs> like so right now You're i'm literally like picky. i know yeah i know so um yeah. but yeah it's i need to get some some more bass traps in it but but yeah but, the, but on the booth thing i would like to say that as much as I love Studio Bricks, at the end of the day, like Dan was saying, a booth when you when you're ready to get a booth, like booth level VO, booth level, <laughs> right? Because you need one. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. If because you actually need one, and it's not only to block yourself from getting out. Right? When you're doing you're a doing lot of on demand voiceover, I call it. Right? Yeah, like you have to do it at three on Tuesday. Oh, right. Crap! That's when the freaking gardeners doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. That's when you need that booth. Yeah, because it stops sound from getting in. Yeah. But um, there's still all of the other companies. As long as you go with a double wall or thicker, they all they're all fairly comparable as far as how much noise they're blocking from getting in. Yeah. Would you agree? 
Yeah, Studio Bricks you know? has the most. I don't know. If I can't quote. Can't don't quote me on this because I can't yeah. keep up with all the prices. But I think they have the most reasonably priced double wall because their base model is double. Wall. Yeah, they don't and have a single wall. their door is quite amazing. It takes um, ten people to put it on. Yeah, very <laughs> heavy. Very yeah heavy but, uh, door. Yeah, but it's... you're gonna wait a long time, and this is the problem with demand also and their proximity to the U.S. They're in Spain. Yeah, that's the double yeah. edged sort of. It. If you need something really fast, a whisper room. Is can ship you stuff really fast, <laughs> um, but um, vocalbooth.com, they've they've always had a really good ventilation system on their premium level ones. Their their top level ventilation is six inch diameter pipe, and it is darn quiet. So I give them wow. huge props for that, and cool. their booths sound pretty good. I hate that they f- glue all the foam into the walls because I don't want foam all over the walls. <laughs> I'd hate that about Vocal Booth. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're all. They all have their little pros and cons. Studio bricks overall, I think. And they oh, all have to they all have to be tuned. They yeah, all have to be they, acoustically they, yeah. treated. Uh I helped somebody that get their basement sounding so good. And she said, Well, I'm a professional voiceover. I gotta buy a studio bricks. Fourteen thousand dollars later, <laughs> the noise floor is better. Could very difficult. Take the bass traps out. No, take this panel out. No, take this back to get it to sound like what her basement was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're yeah. shrinking the size of the room dramatically, right? Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, all um, booths have challenges. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. every booth comes with inherent challenges. Uh, one of them is just to try to make it sound like it's in an actual real life environment rather than a little closet, uh, having some life to it, having some propagation of the sound. But I'll tell you, studio bricks are gorgeous. It's like walking into a sushi bar, isn't it? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's so beautiful and I know. fun to put together. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you have a, if <laughs> your yeah. house it's, it's the hard that makes it great right if you live in texas where all the ceilings are 10 feet high yeah mm-hmm. um then get the extra tall one like if you can have if you have that the space for it difference. Yeah. get the one extra foot extension yeah. it's a big improvement yeah. really it really is so, yeah um there's a company in la i've met these guys now finally they've been wanting to meet me and the, yep, the la booth la yeah. vocal yeah, booth I've, I've met with them these too. guys they're young dudes they're they're hip-hop musicians but they're paying attention to what we're all talking about. Yeah. They and I checked out their booth recently at uh, that's VO and their premium one was really darn good. Good isolation, well made. Um, the acoustics they were using foam pretty much, but they had enough of it, four inch thick and everything. It yeah. was pretty dead. And they could do custom panels. And too. they could do right. custom. They can actually stuff. do like acoustic panels instead of foam. Yeah, they're willing to customize pay, pay the more. heck out of it, and they're they're very reasonable, and they're in LA. Yeah. So they're out just outside. So if you're in LA, there don't overlook them. They will ship elsewhere, but uh, another good company. They're yeah. kind of new. Good guys. All right. Tell you Moving what, on. Let's take a break. Yes. Let's hear from our sponsors who okay. make this show possible. All and right. we'll be back with your questions with Jordan Reynolds, Cliff Zellman, and Uncle Roy Yokelson right after these important. <laughs> this is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is VoiceOverExtra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. 
Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Audiobook Narration. ACX. Audible rights holders, and success as a narrator. That's what you want, right? How about a free class on how to make that happen? Even better, how about three free classes on how to become a successful and happy audiobook narrator? It's about to happen, and all you need to do is let us know you're interested. Go to acxmasterclass.com to jump on the alert list for the upcoming 2020 training that they're offering. Absolutely free. That's acxmasterclass.com. The first class is Friday, January 17th, and they'll continue for the next week. To be able to watch these classes, just let us know you're interested. Visit acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. You are watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we are back with Jordan Reynolds, Uncle Roy Yokelson, and Cliff Zellman, our Audio Masters Roundtable. And we got a bunch more questions from our amazing audience out there in Internet land. You really should be here live, though, because the, it's the, a lot, the it's commercial a break fun. conversations <laughs> are amazing. We got one from the lovely Tracy Reynolds. Well, apparently, her kids Certainly must have is. gone to bed. <laughs> uh, if you use a deep breather or deep breather, if you have a person that knows how to read, like <laughs> me, um, if you use a deep breather, like in her case, well, Tracy's a man, right? No. Yeah. Yes. Tracy Reynolds? Tracy thought, Reynolds is a I woman. This is a guy. I stole Tracy my NS10s. Tracy, I'm so sorry. I, like that. I can't remember. She's a, a mother of five. Okay. <laughs> well, whichever Tracy you are. Which, you know, right <laughs> using waves as the plugin, do you use it before or after any other processing? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I think of deep breathers as an editing thing. So I, I'm post if, if I'm clicking, de clicking, or de breathing, it's happening before during yeah during the editing process. Right. Yeah. And then the rest of the sweetening, whatever you want to call it, mastering is at the end. That's the way I. So think. before. Before. I guess that's the, all the other compressing. Are you guys on the same page on that? I agree. Yeah. But part of me I almost use, because I try deep, not to use deep breathing. Yeah, me too. You know, I highlight, <laughs> yeah. pull it down, highlight, pull I it down. I need all the breath I can get. <laughs> yeah. When you're producing vehicle spots, you can take the time. If you're yes, doing yes, you're learning, Al, maybe abs- not. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Just, I'm, a- I've got the, the uh, luxury of doing 30s and 60s. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You can cut a half second off really easy that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My My post. Uh, you know, is a little different. Sure, sure, sure. How about you, uh, Jordan? Uh, I, from the little I've experimented with deep breathers, I've just been so quickly disappointed with. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not that they're terrible, but it's like, you know, I'll be listening for two minutes. I'm like, whoa, every breath is gone, and then and then like minute three, it's like that was, you know, a real word. And oh, there's another <laughs> word. Oh, and no, no yes. banana. Banana is not a breath. That's a word, you know. So, exactly um, right. Like this is the problem with this tool, in my opinion. It's no risky. matter who makes it, it's not a. You can't trust it. No, it's no. not. It's like magic when it works, and then yeah. that one in twenty times where it screws up, you better know. So now you got to go back yeah. and listen to everything. Yeah, if you're and not that listening back time, after, no. don't just apply all and yeah. And, no and one pra- one passive deep breathing ain't gonna fix it. No, you know? right. Um, and if it not does only fix that, it, you're too much. Not only that, because I I like to deal with them on a breath by breath basis. Mm-hmm. If you just silence it, we're waiting too long to hear the next thing. Mm-hmm. Because if the breath is there, okay, we heard something. But if you put silence in there, or the breath is brought down that much, I'm waiting too long to hear the next thing. So I yeah. always, I always, you know, if 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 it's, for instance, if the breath was 0.6 seconds, I'll put 0.4 seconds and I'll put room tone in, and uh, you know. Yeah, I'm a big audio. fan of the room tone uh, method. Only on audiobooks. No, not otherwise. It's yeah. insert silence. Yeah, 
Yeah. Or yeah. If, if on a corporate narration or something like that, I will usually highlight it and take it down 15 dB, which makes it sound more natural. You know, I, although I tend to take very <laughs> deep breaths so I can, you know, do an entire paragraph and method, and yeah. turn blue. Yeah. 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 Or no, the breath. The breath looks like a little football. Yeah, yeah. You know, and if you can put a, if you can highlight it, your a, a, a dot here, a dot here, and then just bring down the center. All you really want to do is bring down the energy of the right. breath. You don't really want to bring down the center because it's very natural. It's just the energy, and 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 when you got the little football going across either side of the football, bring down the center instead of it going like this. It now goes like that, and then you can just bring it down a little bit, keep it natural. Make but uh, boy, Uncle Roy, you know the the uh, cardinal sin is inserting silence with you know mm. leader, plastic leader. I don't know, <laughs> you just did not do it. Leader you know. tape, yeah, leader tape was new, new, new. It's you know kind of same thing you know with digital. Just bring it down. A bit. I'm old. <laughs> oh, Ron M says, can you start getting stickers from each of these gurus? That way we can cover our boobs with them and look like a race car. <laughs> Nice. Good idea. I have stickers. Uh, Tim Kelly says, terrible problems with Fs. Like in future, <laughs> uh, find us from, it's from, it's 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 F syndrome. Sounds F. odd. I usually chop out the middle of the F in the yeah. editor. I'm using a Rode NTG3, which sounds nice. Sounds lovely. Um, What's your favorite man. DS or Jordan? Oh, God. Uh, I have so many. My current favorite is the Wave Sibilance. And it's like a year or two old. It's just mm -hmm. got, it's it's one of the most natural sounding ones. Before that, I was using the e, e, e Iosis. Iosis. Yeah, E Y. That was the hot one a couple of years. Yeah, ago. where it's very visual and it, it right. shows the energy of it in certain places. Um, that I like that one. But honestly, in my production, not in auditions and stuff, but in demo production, I'm using usually two or three DSers, mm -hmm. either of the same brand, but usually I'm using two to three different brands very gently. Because I I, ne I never have one that just especially for female voices I never have one that does just does it all perfect and I am also manually automating the s just like you do with the breath I go in and turn down those s's and then I do even yeah. crazier stuff which I, I won't go on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, s's I, are s's, very I'm sensitive yeah. Yeah. I find <laughs> I find that 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 that, that sibilance is you know, it's a really weird phenomenon because it's different with everybody yeah. And it doesn't, you know, and with some mics, people are sibilant and with the same mic, other people are not. Yep. It's really weird. And how do you, and how do you deal with it? And I guess, what? you know, if you have a, you know, a plugin that's going to clean that up, that, that helps, you know, if but, you deal with it as, as energy, I mean, yeah. and that, and that's really what it is. Um, <clears throat> maybe have you ever used the fab filters, Jordan? I, I only use their compressor and EQ. I haven't dropped the money on the DS or yet. If if everybody out there in in VOBS land wants to download a a, a demo, definitely check out the uh, Fab Filters DSer. It is fabulous, fabulous. Is but, it complicated? Uh, you know, you don't go... No. In fact, you you start with the uh, start with the default, and then you bring that bring up or down the range, up or down the uh, the threshold, and then of course you can dive in deeper with advanced stuff, but you don't, don't really need to do that. It's very natural and it's very clean. And all it's really doing is finding, like I've been saying, you know, for the last couple minutes is finding that energy and you can certainly see it on a graph and it just brings it right down. It's Being that you guys are pretty filter. opinionated about these things, which, what is it? What's one you really should not use? I have my opinion, uh, but oh, what's, what's, one, yeah, what's a DS and you're like, Oh my God, don't avoid, avoid. What's Renaissance point? is not my favorite. It was yeah. for a, you know I used it for a while. It's a little harsh. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I like uh, the I like the Waves twenty nine dollar DSer. Uh, no, the one that you don't like. What's no, I know, but I didn't get to. Say oh, I'm what sorry. I like that's okay. I'm a jerk. Go ahead. I'm <laughs> no, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I didn't raise my hand. You know, <laughs> the Waves DSer for one for twenty nine bucks. Twenty nine bucks. Sometimes you can even get it a little cheaper. And yeah. second choice is the one that Jordan said the sibl the wave sibilance one. Yeah. And I and and like Jordan and probably Cliff, treat the raw voice file and then put it in multi track and put another layer of processing on top of that. You know, so we have a couple of different uh, ways of treating uh, the uh, S's and stuff. Man, you guys are thorough <laughs> but, we're but there is a there is a uh, eq 
that you can set up. Right. And it's it's a um you know a, a yeah parametric. a parametric EQ. Right. And you can set a threshold to the amount of t- will just pull that down, and you can actually see it when you see the spike in the in the spectrum. You can just zero in, pull that down. Anything you know, find your threshold and just get it to dip a little bit. But that's really all the de is doing. It's just a specific frequency uh, compressor. compressor. It's a compressor with a side chain. Yeah, that's and really the side all chain is. is this little way that the audio goes in, goes out mm-hmm. through something else. That other mm-hmm. thing is an equalizer. The yeah. equalizer passes a series of frequencies, whatever you set it to, and then on the way back through, it gets compressed. Um, I yeah, yeah. I, I the one that's terrible that I haven't been able to figure out how to get to not make a complete mess oh, oh, is I'm Audacity's. Oh. <laughs> I've never even. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I th- use that with your USB. I mean, God bless them. They make a free program. Yeah, and they make free. They mm-hmm. add stuff all the time, but it's designed by a bunch of computer geeks, and they. Not by audio engineers, clearly, yeah, clearly, based on the tools that they know. Like the compressor has one setting for attack and re- release. Awesome. It's okay. one slider. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. It's like one thing a car I really. With, <laughs> it's like a golf cart, like with one gas pedal for the. If your car had one pedal, I don't know. Yeah. That's not a good analogy yeah, because right. Tesla does that. But yeah, not it. They haven't gotten it right yet. Audacity, what's what's really what I do use Audacity for is for the speed change. If I yeah, need that to, is bizarrely good. It's really good. If, if and not I not I don't use it on voiceover so much, but you mean if I'm doing dance time music, compression? yeah, it's time, time, time compression. compression. Yeah. Audacity is is really good. Wow, yeah. mostly can't yeah. hear it. Stumbled onto that. Yeah, so I, they I'm found afraid. some source code that actually worked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm afraid. I don't know. Sorry, but I don't think we really answered the dude's question because it, it was, this was about F, the letter F. <laughs> we went on as a rant Frank. about siblings. And then I think, Slightly different frequency. And, yeah, so... It's a a de can be tuned to calm an F? Yeah, oh, but it, I, bringing I, it down I no? think oh, sure. as a, both a voice talent and a producer, I think what he might be hearing, there's a range of F problems I can have. <laughs> Sounds funny, but um, F problem. But yeah. I think you're either have, you're, you have like, a, I call them sloppy Fs where they, they sound wet. And so you, yes. if you look at the waveform, Idiot. instead of it being like a football, like a smooth S, it's got like little spikes in it. That could be happening. That's, you know, has to do with your anatomy and, and your pronunciation. So you can work on that. But if they're a little wet and like, and just kind of gross sounding, you can wait take minute, off. Wait a minute, wait Did you just say pronunciation? An- enunciation. Yeah. Pronu- yeah. I made up. <laughs> I make up words. We knew what he meant. I know. I, that's <laughs> one of my made up words. Yeah, you're right. It's my, dad, word, it's it? my dad joke. <laughs> Gene. I have to harp no. on stuff like that. No, no. So I, I need to be the pronouncer right now. He's the pronouncer. <laughs> Thanks, sorry, George. I'm sorry, dude. Go I'm ahead. not red. Finish, finish. No, but um, if it's like a, 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 I call it like a wet F, there's not a whole lot you can do about it other than like, you can take an EQ and soften the top end. You can run there's a declicker on it. too much garbage in a wet F, right? It's, yeah. Like, there's all this it's different blah, 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 frequency yeah. material. Yeah. Exactly. So I what a... I do is I just, I, I grab the middle of it. So you highlight it. And because if it's long and you just delete it, so it, the F is still apparent that That's it's exactly an F. That's exactly what he said. Yeah. Because it's a lead yeah. into an F. Because you're a f- yeah, and but sometimes the middle of it's wet too. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so I mean, that's you can what shorten you said it. He was doing. Yeah, okay. I do the same cool. thing, but I don't take out the middle. I'll take out the beginning, and then with the upper corner tool on Pro Tools, ramp up a, a volume a quick fade. So Check. because the yeah. all that stuff is coming before the actual true. Yeah, fifty. So if you clip off all that stuff, just give it a haircut right off, and then just. Go to the upper left hand corner with the super tool if you're in Pro Tools and just do a just drag over, get a little ramp up in volume, and that becomes forward and it's beautiful. Yeah, like uh, crossfade. Taking out the middle of S's also helps a lot. Yeah. Taking yeah. out the center of an mm-hmm. S and having it shut. Hmm. Yeah. Um, or center of a breath. But I yeah. think we said that already. Yeah. yeah. Got one more question from Paul Stefano. Uh, How much time we got? We got enough time this to one hit. I could talk about for a long time. We could. Time. And, I, and then I, got, I have some thoughts on that too. So. Go for it. Uh, Paul asks, what is everybody's opinion on DSP processing on audio, as in the universal audio plugins? So more like the, the recording through a processor that's a an emulation of real equipment. 
that kind of, I think that's what he's getting at. Is it so necessary for anybody? Voiceover? And you guys using that in your production yeah. workflow? Yeah, You're talking about UAD plugins? Like, yeah, like, like UAD, UAD plugins, plugins, Apollo stuff. That we pray. We drop on our knees and we pray to UAD plugins. I've got the DBX 160. I swear to God, I haven't heard that thing in 20 years. And I plugged it in, not that I'd ever use it, but I plugged it in and it was a DBX 160. I mean, it's, I love UAD. I love everything Universal Audio mm. does. But, and I'm not even a sponsor. Yeah. We, we remember we were in the, 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 the uh, love them all, the uh, UA booth at uh, NAM last year. Yeah. And they had the shootout with, is this what, what which yeah, mic was they it? They had it's, a four pieces, there was a four different pieces of gear, gear right. blind A B test. You know, digital versus analog hardware. Yeah, yeah. and they had like an L A two A a real oh one. Oh my and, god. Oh, and, and then you would just choose which one you liked, and then at the end they would say, You got two out of four right. That's and they awesome. like, give you a shot glass and <laughs> <laughs> It was I love them. cool. That was a fun booth. As They're it pertains cheap. to a word like a voice talent who isn't super techie or nerdy. I believe because a lot. I think a lot of talent have the Universal Audio, the Apollo Twins now, or the the yeah. Arrow, right? Yeah. Um, it's uh -huh. so good for for a, just a straight up voiceover studio. But um, you can you can run like a virtual preamp now, or a compressor, and all that. So I think I feel much more strongly on this than not that you should hire someone like us to to tune it for you. Oh, yeah. um, the preamps are a little less Absolutely. risky. Either have us tune it or but don't use anything. anything. Yeah. Just right. use it as an interface. Yeah. One or the um, other. But right. if you want to use it to be permanent going in, it's it's great to like smooth out certain things, but you really got to have a pro do it if you don't know what you're doing. Otherwise, it's going to, some of them can distort really easily. The compressor that's built, because a lot of them are channel strips, which is not just a preamp, but it's the compressor, a it's an EQ. On. And a lot of those things are on by default. And yeah. you can't tell because there's so many knobs. They're really busy. Yeah. So yeah, you can just be very careful. Like experiment, like learn, but don't start applying it on stuff you send out. Hire someone like us to really tweak it for you. To get plus one for George one. Widom stacks. Yeah. Well, I mean <laughs> stacks, whatever it is. But I mean the yeah. In the case, I so saw I've been like changing my mind about the UAD processing for voiceover, and it's because I've had a client come to me that I had somebody else set it up for them. And even though I was telling clients similar advice as this other fellow was, it, it hearing it from the other side, from a third party, made me realize that what I'm telling people can be difficult. So I was putting in, you know, a preamp and maybe a compressor and an EQ. And then they would say, well, how do I change the levels? And I'd be like, well, <laughs> yeah, if you turn the gain, you're actually just increasing the input to the compressor, yeah. which is effectively changing the threshold. And, and then it's like pressing more, yeah. like head explodes, yeah. right? It's if you've got an Apollo, you want to be able to just turn the damn mic up and down with that knob. Right, exactly. And if you've got all that stuff inserted, it doesn't necessarily do that. If you're using an EQ, fine. But if you're using compression and limiters and stuff and... I love the LA2 legacy thing. It's amazing. And I do too. It's then I have to, if they're using the LA2, I have to say, okay, so when you want to adjust the level, you're going to go to the out, the gain knob on the LA2A, which is actually the output yeah. knob, which is totally confusing and blah. It just makes people's melt down. So Hit record, turn off all that <laughs> crap, just mm. turn on the preamp, use the native pre and just record until you get to this point where you're doing. A lot of high paced, just in time, got to turn it around. You're looking at any way to shave time off production. Then I think it makes sense to to start doing the front end stuff like that. Yeah, this That's is this opinion. is a luxury. It's a toy, yeah. what we're talking about. I can't think of any instance where these UAD uh, plugins that you run live and it's permanent to tape, right? In the recording, you it's can't fix forever. it. Yeah. Um, these are all luxury things. Not, not meaning like it's unattainable. I just mean like, None of them are fixing an inherent problem that you may already have in your audio. Like these are like, oh, I kind of want it to sound a bit more warm in the mid range or, you know, you, there are like, there's like a de and stuff like that. That'll yeah. help with some sip, but that's like about it, you know, yeah. and, 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 and a high pass tools. filter, but that you don't need a plug in for that. There's a built in high pass filter on most mics on higher end mics or built in on, on every 9.9% of you know? what most of you are doing is going to be, you can fix it in post a little bit. And that yeah. exactly. But, but, less but risky. the question, but wasn't the question. Do we like the emulation compared to the hardware? Uh, that wasn't that exactly question. the question, but oh, just, basically, no. just basically, <laughs> what do you think of those plugins? I think is essentially what Paul is saying. 
And I think we've pretty much said we think they're pretty damn good. But yeah, they're if you they're know not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not really good. good. Yeah. You so, know the funnest thing I ever do? I'll. Sorry, it's time to wrap this up. Yeah, but go ahead. The funnest <laughs> thing I get to do as a as a tech now is someone goes and buys the whole yep. kit, which is the Apollo Twin and a Townsend Labs <laughs> Spear L twenty two. We got and they Make set it, it up like, and then I can from my studio <laughs> over Source Connect point the mic wherever I want, change the proximity effect, change the models, That's create so a fun. whole chain. My one client bought the Ocean Way plugins. Yep. He bought a whole mm -hmm. freaking. Engine. Maris got them all. <laughs> oh my god, dude! She's that like, is, she spends more time tweaking all her mics and playing with them than getting work done. Mara needs, Mara needs nothing. It's I know bad. she doesn't need it, but she, she, it's bad. She yeah, wants it. but it's so good. And it, yeah, anyway, it's so fun. Yeah. So in conclusion, and, <laughs> yeah. and I think people need to remember that all of this stuff was designed for musicians for recording producers. music and people producers like know stuff. people who know their stuff engineers. people yeah. who have been doing it for years and years and years and understand how they are are bending the sound and how they are changing it when you're in your closet doing voiceover work these should really be the last of your concerns but if you're geeky and you want to have fun and you want to learn how to do it you got to go out and you got to go out and play but I wouldn't risk, you know, a nice good job on it because no. like, oh, this is going to be really cool. <laughs> yeah. Most yeah. of the microphones were not designed for voiceover. They were designed right. for music recording. Right. Unless, unless you're going back to ribbons and stuff like that. Which are fun. But um, anyway. So final word, Jordan, quickly. On what? I don't know. <laughs> How does one get a hold of you? Oh, uh, I just. Uh, Google Jordan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. probably That's Jordan, how I found jo it. JordanReynolds.com. <laughs> yeah. I'm mostly active on Instagram if you if you want to get my attention. <laughs> he likes cats. Yeah, I apparently. like cats. Yeah. I love my cat. I'm a cat daddy. I'm a convert. <laughs> it's Mary's cat. Yeah. Uncle Cliff. Roy. Uncle Roy. Sorry. Hope to see everybody at VO Atlanta and other conferences that I'm not allowed to talk about because we're under contract with VO Atlanta. Mm. Um and, Until the Atlanta is over. <laughs> right. Uh, and see everybody at my house October 3rd and 4th. Yay. Hi. <laughs> Barbara, yeah. try and make Annual it this year. BBS. Uh, and how do they get a hold of you? Uh, Antlandproductions.com. All right. Cliff. Um, I hope to see everybody too at VO Atlanta. Um, we're going to be doing some things a little bit different. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you can get in touch with me. Uh, 24 7 email address C Zellman. 10 at gmail.com and visit a dash amazing demos.com to hear some fun stuff. So thank you guys for, for having us on. All right. Well, this is John a little bit on the geeky end towards the end, but you know, well, like, damn it. But you, but you found time. Yeah. I know how you love that stuff. <laughs> anyway, we we'll be back to wrap things up and do a nice tight little ball right after this. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS.TV. VoiceOverEssentials.com is still ringing in the new year. And for a short time only, get their improved voice-optimized headphones. These right here at a special 2020 savings. The VoiceOver Headphones 2.0. The latest edition of their best-selling voice-optimized headphones have arrived with 100% accurate, transparent sound and the creature comforts voice actors deserve. None of the booming bass or shrill high-end found in other headphones coupled with engineering that makes them an absolute joy to wear. Enhancements to the 2.0 headphones include a thicker, more comfortable headband, plus a new combo-coiled straight cord with mini plugs and a quarter-inch screw-on adapter, and a thicker felt-lined travel pouch. The fold-flat ear cup design gives the 2.0 cans a smaller footprint when traveling. And most importantly, we've boosted the mid-range clarity with reduced bass. These are usually $149. Now, 2020 off, $129.88. Eh, sort of. This introductory offer only lasts for a short time, so order now. It features the studio, mo studio monitoring headphones, closed back over ear design, more comfortable, thicker padded leather headband, leather covered memory foam ear pads, and includes two gold plated mini plugs and a studio standard quarter inch screw on adapter. New headphones, mini jack for cord replacements. It comes out 
just like that. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com right now and buy them while they're on sale. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hey, everybody, it's time to talk about Source Elements. You know who they are, the creators of Source Connect, that tool that you don't have. What? You don't have it? You should have it. It's that tool that allows you to connect your studio to other studios around the world so they can record you from your booth. Uh, It's a tool you should have because even if you're not being asked for it now, You might be asked for it tomorrow or in a month or in a year. You want to have it ready to go and know how to use it. It's really the heir apparent to ISDN technology, and it is definitely what the pros are using. You can go ahead and sign up for a 15-day free trial of Source Connect over at SourceElements.com. Get it up and running. Get your iLock account in order. There's a little video on there. I'll teach you how to do it by yours truly. And it'll help you get up and running so you can understand how it all works. Then that day that you get the gig, you can activate the license. It's a no-brainer. Give it a try. Thanks for your support, Source Elements. And we'll see you right after this break. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, that was fun. <laughs> we're, we're a little off center there, but it's okay. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, well, no, that, that was a total geek out. Oh, um, man. And I know how you love geeking out. <laughs> <laughs> was it good for you? All That's right. over here, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, next week, another great guest. And uh, if you, there's a guest, somebody you'd like to see on the show, let us know. Write to us at theguysatvobs.tv. And uh, say, hey, I want to hear this person. I got a lot of people lined up. We're just trying to get the dates in. Yeah, it's a busy time of year. Yeah, He's yeah. working for Yeah, me. which is good. Yeah, Work is good. good. Yeah. Uh, who are our donors this week? Our donors include Antland Productions. Who's that guy? Uh, Graham Spicer, Joseph Harrison, Christy Burns, Michael Kearns, Karen O'Brien. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. She's a sweet. We love you. Uh, Har- Harlow Rodriguez, Don Griffith, and Martha Kahn. All right. Another sweetie friend of Yes, I Kahn Productions. She's the best. All right. All right. Uh, hey, show us your booths. It's fun to be out in the universe, floating around. You know, I've always wanted to, wondered what it would be like out in space. Uh, but send us your booths. Show us what you're doing. Uh, even if it's a closet, but just make sure it's in landscape. Not portrait. Uh, also, uh, we got to plug ourselves real quick. Okay. I'm George the Tech. You can find me at George the dot tech because, you know, short domains. Um, but if that makes your head melt, it's George the Tech dot com. And I've got menus on there of lots of services, probably too many options. So then you'll go to the contact page where you'll send me a message and ask me which of these 73 different things I have on there they should probably do, which happens a lot. And that's totally fine. Um, but there's, you can send me files for sound checking or have stacks done, tune in your Apollo plugins, whatever. It's all, it's all on there. Dan's website is voiceoverstudio.com. Yes. Uh, head on over there. Love working with beginners. If you have no idea what you're doing, I can help you out. I have a degree in education, so I can actually teach this stuff uh, and get you where you need to be. Uh, And you can drop off your audio using my specimen collection cup, 25 bucks. I will analyze your current audio and we'll see if it's up to snuff or whatever it's supposed to be. Whistle. Whistle. What it's supposed supposed to to sound sound like. like. All right. 
Uh, let's see here. We need to thank our sponsors. You go first. Again? Time. Okay. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VoiceOverHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. Mm-hmm. When quality matters. Also, uh, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Webcasting. <laughs> and uh, Sue Merlino for amazing work dealing with these five maniacs tonight. Trying to get uh, stuff together so you can all understand it. Uh, well, if by chance you are a voice actor, you've come to the right place. Uh, this is not an easy business, but we're here to help you make it sound good. Because if it sounds good, it's probably pretty good. All right. Thanks to all our guests tonight. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. I just did that. I'm George Whittem. <laughs> Let's take that again. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. B.S. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time.